This draft had a list of big names, but only four all-stars. And you know what the biggest travesty is? They didn't even draft Boban. Bro, come on! In today's video, I'm redrafting the 2010 NBA Draft. What's up guys, this is Troy, host of the Half Court Report YouTube channel, and you know what, I would do a redraft video every day if I could. I love the draft, I love redrafts, I love talking about the draft, so that's what we're going to do here today. Make sure you let me know in the comments if you guys like draft stuff as well, you want me to keep doing videos like this, we are going for 60 likes on this video, you know, the number of picks in two rounds of the NBA draft. So big goal, but we can get there. Also, subscribe to the channel if you like the NBA and you like content like this. And also be sure and follow me on Twitter at Half Court Report. So unlike other NBA channels that do redrafts like this, I'm actually going to take team needs into account. So do keep that in mind as you're watching this video. I went back and I researched what these teams were like back in 2010, what kind of players they had, and put all that information together when deciding who should be their pick in this redraft. So let's get to it. The Washington Wizards had the number one pick and they originally selected John Wall back in 2010. Mama, there goes that man. And in this redraft, hey, they're gonna pick John Wall again. And this was a Wizards team that was in need of change during that time. They had Gilbert Arenas, who was really wearing out his welcome there after the gun incident. So he was on thin ice and they needed a star. And coming out of college, John Wall was a can't miss type of prospect. And if not for the injuries, he would probably be right up there along those lines. So this was a tough call between him and the next player, but I still think they pick Wall in this redraft. The Sixers had the number two pick in 2010, and they selected Evan Turner. But in this redraft, they're going to go with Paul George, PG. So in this scenario, Paul George goes to a team with a young Drew Holiday. They still had Andre Iguodala. They also had an aging Elton Brand. But I love the idea of building around Drew Holiday, PG, and Iguodala. The third pick was made by the then New Jersey Nets, who are now the Brooklyn Nets. They picked Derek Favors. In this redraft, though, they are going to pick Gordon Hayward. So, of course, Derek Favors was actually traded midway through that season, but this was a Nets team that had only won 12 games the previous season. So, I think Gordon Hayward is a great pick here. Fourth pick, though, was made by the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they selected oof, Wesley Johnson, which... At the time, I was scratching my head thinking, what are they doing with that pick? Well, in this redraft, they're going to pick Boogie DeMarcus Cousins. It's ridiculous. And this is where things are getting interesting. So the DeMarcus Cousins, I would have loved to have seen what he looked like on this Minnesota team at this time. They drafted Kevin Love the previous year. So I think a Kevin Love to Marcus Cousins front court would have been a lot of fun to watch. Maybe not the best defensive front court, but still a really cool uh, couple players to see play together. They also had Rubio coming over from Spain. They had Michael Beasley. They had Darko. So many stories from that locker room. I love it. The fifth pick in the 2010 NBA Draft was made by the Sacramento Kings, and they selected DeMarcus Cousins. It's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. But in this scenario, he's off the board, so they're going to go in another direction with a point guard, and they're going to pick Eric Bledsoe. So they had rookie Tyreek Evans the previous year, and really, that was it. So I think a Tyreek Evans, Eric Bledsoe backcourt, Pretty exciting. The Golden State Warriors had the number six pick and they selected Ekpe Udo from Baylor University. In this redraft though, they're not gonna pick Udo, not by a long shot, they're gonna pick Derek Favors, so another big guy. So they were coming off a season with rookie Steph Curry. They also had Monte Ellis, they had David Lee. So I think when you bring Derek Favors in, he forms a nice front line with David Lee, kind of that offense, defense type thing. 
The Detroit Pistons had the number seven pick in the 2010 draft and they selected Greg Monroe. Not so for you. But in the redraft, they're gonna go with Ed Davis. So at this time they had an aging Ben Wallace. They also had Rip Hamilton. They were needing some fresh blood to come in. Maybe Ed Davis learns from Ben Wallace, all those defensive lessons, maybe becomes a better rebounder, shot blocker, I don't know. But he carries on with that hard hat mentality that Detroit has. The number eight pick was made by the LA Clippers and they picked Al Farouk Aminu. But in the redraft, they're gonna go with Evan Turner, who was the number two pick originally in 2010. So this was a team that was rolling out Baron Davis, Eric Gordon, and DeAndre Jordan. So I'm thinking put Evan Turner in as kind of a do-it-all kind of forward, plus he's the best guy left on the board. The Utah Jazz had the number nine pick, and we all remember they selected Gordon Hayward, which was a great pick at the time. He went earlier in this draft though, so since he's off the board, they're gonna pick Avery Bradley, who had some great years in Boston. So you put him with Al Jefferson and Paul Millsap, really interesting Utah Jazz team. Pick number 10 was made by the Indiana Pacers, and they selected Paul George, who went number two in this redraft. So they are gonna get quite the downgrade with Al Farouk Aminu. No! So they already had Danny Granger, Roy Hibbert at the time. Maybe put Roy and Al Farouk Aminu in kind of as a front line of the future. Eh, I'm not too excited about it, but you're not gonna get any better than Paul George at this pick, so I think it's gonna be a downgrade. Oklahoma City had the number 11 pick and they selected Cole Aldrich. This time around though, they pick another project center in Hassan Whiteside. This would have been very interesting because Hassan Whiteside really didn't blossom until he left the NBA after his first couple years and then came back into the league when he got some run with Miami. I think in retrospect, probably the better pick than what Cole Aldridge was. The Memphis Grizzlies picked number 12 and they picked Xavier Henry, who as a Memphis fan, I thought was a can't miss prospect at the time. I was so excited when they made this pick, but he didn't pan out at all. In this redraft, they're gonna pick Lance Stevenson and Pick this guy just for comedy effect only. Put him on a team with Zebo, Zach Randolph, Marc Gasol, Mike Conley, Tony Allen. How fun is this? <laughs> the Toronto Raptors had the number 13 pick and they selected Ed Davis, but in this redraft, Ed Davis is off the board. So they're gonna pick Nemanja Bielica, who was a second rounder, a sharp shooting big man who now plays for the Kings. I think he would have been a nice front line with Andrea Bargnani. You'd have the young DeMar DeRozan on the team at the time, also Jose Calderon. Kind of a fun team. And finally, for the 14th pick, the Houston Rockets selected Patrick Patterson, but they're gonna choose Jeremy Lin. Lin Sanity is gonna come to Texas and come to the big H. What? So best guy left to pick on the board, I think. I figured let's give him Jeremy Lin. They actually signed Jeremy Lin to a contract later on, but let's see how he would do here as a lottery pick. So wrapping everything up, the Wizards picked John Wall, which was where he was picked originally. The Sixers selected Paul George, up eight spots for him. The Nets selected Gordon Hayward, up six spots for him. DeMarcus Cousins went to the T-Wolves, up one spot. Up 13 spots, Eric Bledsoe went to the Kings. Derek Favors fell three spots going to the Warriors. Ed Davis was up six spots going to the Pistons. Evan Turner fell six spots going to the Clippers. The Jazz picked Avery Bradley up 10 spots for him. Al Farouk Aminu fell two spots to go to the Pacers at number 10. Number 11, the Thunder picked Hassan Whiteside, which is up 22 spots. He was a second rounder. Lance Stevenson, another second rounder, went to the Grizzlies up 28 spots. Nemanja Bielica went up 22 spots to go to the Raptors. And then Jeremy Lin went from undrafted to the number 14 pick up 47 spots. And there you have it, 2010 redraft. These are a lot of fun to do. If you have your thoughts on who should have gone where, let me know in the comment. Going for 60 likes on this video, number of picks in the two rounds of the draft. So yeah, let me hear your opinions. And if you enjoy this type of content, click that thumbs up button and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Troy with the Half Court Report, and I'll see you next time.
Hey guys, one more thing. Here's some more videos to check out on the Half Court Report channel. I hope you like them, and thanks for watching.